Any better? Yeah, I can hear it now. Uh, good morning and welcome to you all. A special welcome to all who are uh, listening to us or watching us in uh, various uh, um, media methods. And uh, we try and uh, preserve our social space here, so that's kind of the order of the day. Uh, and you'll see how communion uh, works uh, as we go along. The elders will demonstrate first. Uh, some of you, it'll be old hat because you've been here already. Um, I'll let you take care of the announcements yourself, uh, but we begin uh, with the singing of, excuse me, our first hymn, hymn number 754, Entrust Your Days and Burdens.
rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause in silence for reflection on God's word and for self-examination. Let us now confess our sins to God our Father, together. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue with the intro. I will sing of steadfast love and justice. To you, O Lord, I will make music. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing of steadfast love and justice. To you, O Lord, I will make music. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the Spirit of truth, whom you promised from the Father, for you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our first lesson pointed for today is from Acts, the first chapter, beginning with verse 12. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew. James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer, together with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120. And said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man bought a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants, inhabitants of Jerusalem so that the field was called in their own language a keldama, which is field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning with the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph called Barsabas, and who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry. An apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And also from First Peter, the fourth chapter, and also a portion from the fifth chapter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. Let Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for the judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of, of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let us who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. Cast all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. 
Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of trial, same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. We rise. Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life that they should know you have, excuse me that they know you the only true god and jesus christ whom you have sent i glorified you on earth having accomplished the work that you gave me to do and now father glorify me in your own presence with the glory that i had with you before the world existed i have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you, for I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you gave me, you have given me. For they are yours, all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We continue with hymn number 664, Fight the Good Fight.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the movie True Grit, the one with John Wayne as Rooster Cogburn, the marshal, there is a scene where a robber and murderer named Tom Chaney runs into the daughter of a man he shot and robbed. The daughter, named Maddie Ross, goes to a stream in the wilderness to fetch water, and she sees the man there that she had paid Marshal Rooster J. Cogburn to find and bring to justice. As the story goes on, she shoots Tom Chaney with a Colt's Dragoon, a revolver too big for her, and she only wounds Chaney. He, the murdering robber, cries out, Why do things always happen to me? Now I've been shot by a child. Well, it's a classic Western movie. And Tom Chaney's response to his predicament is classic as well. Why do things always happen to me? Chaney eventually gets what he deserves. For the Bible says, Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. Again, it's in the Bible. For in the image of God has God made man. Genesis 9, verse 6. Cheney dies in violence. He who lives by the sword dies by the sword. Have you ever asked, why does everything happen to me? Does it seem like you never get a break? Do the struggles come one after another? Sometimes a new one cropping up before the old trouble even wears off? Do aches and pains come to you? A new one. And there is seldom a day when you feel really good. Or do you struggle financially? Doesn't it seem like there is never enough, just one step ahead of the wolves, and yes, we have plenty, and yet it's never enough. Oh, and our struggles don't end with material things, do they? We struggle to do what is right, but the temptations always seem so great. Those who are supposed to help us, to help you, lead you into trouble. And even when you're good, someone takes issue with that. In fact, when you, see, when you are good, it seems like the reaction of some is worse than if you have robbed or murdered someone. You're a Christian, right? Why does everything happen to you? You've got nothing on Tom Cheney, and neither do I. You and I have disobeyed many commandments before we ever get to the fifth, do not murder, or the seventh, thou shalt not steal. You and I are as guilty as Tom Cheney even before we were born. Conceived and born sinful, born corrupted, sinful through and through. You, I, Tom Cheney, Maddie Ross, and Rooster Cogburn are peas in a pod, born of sinful human flesh with our propensity, a natural inclination to commit sin. Praise be to God that you and I and the performers in the movie True Grit have a Savior who went to the cross to die for us. God said, when you sin, you die. Yet he sent his one and only Son, perfect and holy, in human flesh and blood, to die for the whole world. For U.S. Marshals and Texas Rangers, vengeful daughters, robbers and murderers, and me, and you too, and for all the world. You and I have received that salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. That terrible sin, stain of sin and the promised punishment of eternal condemnation has been removed from you by faith in Christ Jesus and by God's sacrament of baptism. Our writer for this morning's lesson is St. Peter. And we call him a saint, and yet he lied. He boasted on himself. He broke the fifth commandment while in the very presence of Jesus. Remember in the garden, he drew his sword 
and struck at the servant of the high priest. He would have killed, gladly killed the man had he not missed and cut off the man's ear. Later, he denies Jesus, but we call him saint, forgiven like us. Yet Peter had a very difficult life bearing the name of Christ. He was persecuted severely and eventually crucified as a creature that was subhuman to his persecutors. That's the unsettling part for many. You can be a Christian and lots of bad things still happen to you. You receive Christ as Savior through the power of the Holy Spirit. And though you are saved, though your sins are forgiven, you still suffer. You live in a broken world, in broken and corrupt bodies. Just like me and Rooster Cogburn, John Wayne. I always wanted to say his name and mine in the same sentence. Though saved by Christ, through his death and resurrection, we still live in a broken world, in broken and corrupt creation, complete with our own bodies, being weak and imperfect our minds as well. But know this, there is something more. As the redeemed of Christ, we receive a special hatred by Satan and the world. Even now in our day, church attendance is viewed as non-essential by many, and special hatred is expressed toward those who gather now, even with the restrictions that we have put in place. Even now in our day, you are in the crosshairs of Satan. With a special vengeance, he comes after you. When we baptize, it is though we put a bullseye on the baptized and Satan and the world zero in with special turmoils and troubles. Where is God our Savior when all this is going on? Notice our text begins, Beloved. This is not simply stating that your God and Savior love you, but rather that the loved is who you are. Do not be surprised when fiery trial or at the fiery trial when it comes upon you as though something strange were happening to you. And although we often think our suffering is unique to us, that's not true. A fiery trial, not just a milk toast trial, but a fiery trial. The trials which come upon you are not unique to you. There is an account of a young boy who was hanged in a German concentration camp. A young Jewish boy, as he was strangled by his own weight at the end of a rope, a cry came out from those who were forced to watch. Where is God now? And then the answer, there on the gallows. Oops, excuse me. There on the gallows. Yes, Christ died for this young man too. The answer, there he is. Christ suffered on a tree as well. For this young man, not only the sins he committed, but also the sins done for him, or done against him. Jesus suffered such a trial, even as lethal as hanging on the cross. And when we suffer, we are sharing in Christ's suffering. Certainly he died for sin, not his own. Now, this does not mean that you should be that if you are hung for murdering someone, you are sharing in Christ's death on the cross. You are rather dying the civil punishment for murder. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But should you be hanged for your faith in Christ? You indeed then share in the suffering of Jesus. And Peter says rejoice in that. Even if it comes to that point, rejoice. And Peter was crucified. 
And the report is that he was crucified upside down. But you'll notice that in our text, that fiery trial is not to fail you, but to test you. A teacher may test you, but it's not with the intention of failing you. Rather, it's to see what you know or what you do not know and can be taught more in the future. Or what you can do and to improve that, uh, those talents and abilities. You know, sports teams do everything they can to test the starting team, to, just, to strengthen them, not to destroy them, to make them fit for the challenge ahead rather than to harm or destroy them, to make them fit. And look at verse 13. But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings that you may also rejoice and be glad when His glory is revealed. He is the victor. And when He comes again, you will be revealed as those who suffered and remained in faith in Jesus Christ. Your suffering for Christ's sake identifies you with Him. His glory will be revealed in you on the last day. And as you suffer, He suffered. And as He is glorified, you will be glorified in Him also. His glory will shine forth in you as the redeemed, as those pure, holy, and strong by God's mighty power, coming to you through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Christ's suffering is revealed in His redemption for you from all your sin. Your suffering, for Christ's sake, shows that you are truly His. Now, don't go looking for suffering. It will find you on its own. It's a mistake to pick your own suffering. If you are insulted, our text says, for the name of Jesus, you are blessed, thoroughly blessed in every way. Because the Spirit of God, or Spirit of glory and God rests on you. The Holy Spirit Resting on you. He is sanctifying you. Making you clean. Motivating you. And causing you. Bringing you. To do good. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. Or a thief. Or an evildoer. Or as a meddler. That means do not hang. Because you have murdered or because of your evil doing. Notice this, or your meddling. Keep that in mind. Sticking your nose in someone else's business is serious business. If you try to influence someone else's outcome for your own benefit, for selfish reasons, and not to assist them, if you stir the pot that is not yours to stir, you receive this strong comment condemnation from the Lord. Repent and receive forgiveness. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, our text says, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name, Christ. For the time of judgment, for it is time for the judgment to begin at the household of God. Did you hear that? Judgment begins in the household of God. Those close to him must be shown to be holy. How is this done? By judgment through the word. Fire as a refiner's furnace. Through repentance. And then the promised forgiveness. You see, if you stand the test, you will be declared worthy of heaven. And what is the test? Faith in Jesus Christ. And in that you are seen as perfect and holy. Judged to be so. Spoken of and proclaimed to be thus. And there is assurance. It is not in my ability. It's about Christ's ability. It's not about your ability. It's about Christ's ability. And the fact that he gave you and me the seal of victory in our baptism. 
His suffering in perfect obedience is your suffering in perfection and obedience. Those who caused you to suffer for His name are recognizing that you, in fact, bear His name, dear Christian. And then verse 19. Therefore, let those who suffer according to God to entrust their souls to a faithful Creator while doing good. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time He may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on Him, because He cares for you. Why does everything happen to you and to me? Because you are the redeemed of Christ, and you bear His name. The promise of suffering for you, and it will happen, is accompanied by the word that you are precious to God. He does not want to cause you to fall, but to strengthen you with His gifts beyond your own ability. His goal is to expose you, or His goal is not to expose you to shame and guilt, but to exalt you in His forgiveness as perfect and holy because you bear the name of Jesus. Notice in our gospel lesson, Jesus claims you as his very own, given to him by your Father in heaven, who has owned you since before the foundation of the world. He entrusts him to Jesus, and Jesus carries out the saving act of suffering and death on the cross for you. He has re- Jesus has received you from the Father, from before the foundation of the world, to be his own. And he has proved it up in his life, death, and resurrection. And there in John 17, you can find your Savior pleading with the Father to bless you and keep you, to hold you in his favor, and to preserve you in faith until you reach heaven. God entrusted you to his perfect Son, who suffered mightily and died for you so that he could redeem you as God's own child. And this is done. It's completed. The purification is complete. You have been declared holy and perfect by God's word of favor for the sake of His Son, Jesus. And you bear His name. There is no one, no creature, no institution, no person that has authority or power to undo that great declaration. And as those promises... And and so, with those promises, we march into the future, knowing that we that we are the Father's own, defended and protected by the Holy Spirit, and strengthened and secured by that same Spirit. Stay firm in the faith, always rejoicing by worshiping and hearing the Word, receiving the strength of the Spirit through the forgiveness of your sins in the absolution and the sacrament of the altar. Do not despair. Exaltation is God's plan for you. We close with the last four verses of our text for this morning and receive in it the knowledge that the Almighty God will bring about in you and me and all who believe salvation. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your advert adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour resist him firm in your faith knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world and after you have suffered a little while the god of all grace that what that has called you to his eternal glory in christ he will restore confirm strengthen and establish you To him be the dominion, forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now may the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We rise and continue with the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not me, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son worship and glorify, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We continue with the prayers of the church. Guard your people, O Lord, and grant us unity of faith and singleness of heart as we come to you in prayer. Lord, you have promised not to abandon your people, but to be with us always. Grant us grace to hear the word with faith and receive your holy sacrament with repentant hearts, and to keep what we hear and receive upon our lips in holy lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have delivered the saints from fiery trial and raised up the martyr from the darkness of death to everlasting life. Give to us courage that we may give bold witness to the truth in our own day and proclaim Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have pledged to us your spirit and promised to supply your church with pastors who will preach and teach your word. Give us ears to hear and hearts to believe your word. Raise up those who will serve your church in generations to come, that we may never be without aid of those who serve us in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have the power over all things. Appoint an order on earth for the protection of the weak, the punishment of evildoers, and the encouragement of virtue. Bless Donald, our president, Doug, our governor, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Give them wisdom for the challenges of our times and preserve them from self-serving concerns. Give us grace that we may honor the gift of liberty and be good citizens and neighbors to all. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, on this weekend, we come to you observing uh, those who have suffered and some who have died for our protection. We ask that you would bless all the families of those who have served in our nation's military, those who have died and those who are, uh, have survived but may still be wounded in body or in mind. We ask that you would give to them patience and comfort, knowing that in the end of days you will restore all things. We thank you for the devotion of those who have gone to foreign shores uh, to meet our enemies and to preserve peace and justice. Protect our military who serve now, also our law enforcement officers, rescue workers, and first responders. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, you have compassion on all who suffer. Give grace to the sick, to those with mental illness, to the dying in their last hours, and to those who grieve. Hear us especially for Mark Evan, also Sheila, Becky, Marcia, and Elwood, Dave, Paul, Emily, Beth, Delmer, Nicole, Kelly, also Sophie, Carla, Dwayne, Larry, Sharon, 
Monica, Betty in Dallas, Reverend Eric Kelbear, Harold, Alvin, and Marcella. Also, Reverend Tom Eckstein, Myron, Judy, Stan, Dawn, Allegra, Betty, Tracy, Emma, Esther, Reverend Al Eppen, Christine, Rodney, Delmer, and Kathleen. We also pray for Erna, B, Frida, Hertha, and Emil who reside in our local care center, plus all the pastors and congregations of our North Dakota district. Continue to bless the work of the large print center and the Dakota Hope Clinic as they come in aid to others. We pray for our international missions of the district, especially this morning. We remember our mission work in Kenya and ask that you would use our funds and the work of those uh, who serve there to better the lives of young people, children there, and also to increase their faith. We pray also for our graduates uh, who have accumulated much knowledge, and we ask that you would bless Rachel and Hunter as they continue in their education, cause them to use their talents and abilities in their times to bring uh, service to others. And also we pray for those we name in our hearts before you. Grant to them and to us patience in our afflictions. And deliver us according to your gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you all are the source of all wisdom and knowledge. Bless those who teach, those who learn, and especially who graduate this year. Be the hope of those whose plans have been disappointed and grant that all graduates would find good employment. Guide them in the pursuit of your word and truth to live honorable lives and worthy vocation. That in all things you may be glorified. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have given us your Son as our Savior and Redeemer. He has set his table among us in the presence of our enemies that we might be fed upon the body of Christ and drink his blood. Guard the unity of this table that we would confess him with one voice and receive this blessed sacrament with one faith. And hear our prayers for all, for who, for all who are gathering uh, and those who for gathering has been made difficult and worship in remote locations. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, you have daily and richly supplied us with all things for this body and life. Give us grateful hearts that we may receive your gifts with thanksgiving and bring to you our tithes and offerings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we rejoice in the Savior's promise to guard the people who wear your name by baptism and faith until we are with you in your presence forevermore. Guard us against the devil who prowls about like a roaring lion seeking those he might devour. Grant us power to resist him and to trust in you without fear. Through Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Following the service, you may place your offerings in the uh, drop box in the back of, back of the narthex. You who are not here may mail them in or drop them by or use the link on the church website uh, to contribute there. We continue standing for the offertory.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially, we are bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored us to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and glorify thy we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated.
you rise? children of the congregation receive the blessing of our Lord. Uh, may God's grace and peace grow in you. Amen. Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Please be seated. We continue with hymn number 517 in Lutheran service book, By All Your Saints in Warfare. Good morning again, and 
Welcome to you all, all, all who are here and all who are watching or listening. Uh, we're glad you could join us. Um, God keep you safe and healthy through the week. Uh, and again, uh, God's blessings to you.